Hello book babes! In this episode, we will be looking at Employees First, Customers Second by Vinet Nayar. My name is June and this is Noble Book Review. Hey guys, wherever you are, I hope you're having a fabulous day. If you're new to my channel, welcome and if you're already a subscriber, thank you for staying with me. Now you guys know I've talked a lot about fiction books, but I'll have you know that I also read a lot of non-fiction, especially when it comes to books related to self-improvement, uh, business management, change management, leadership, and so on. You get the picture what I've been to. Vinet Nayar, Vos... Vos... Vinet Vos... I've, I've speaker with a Moscovite accent at the moment. <laughs> no, Vinet Nayar was the uh, was a CEO of HCL Technologies, and in this book, it is uh, a first-person account of how he came to take over the reins of the company and transformed it from a large but slow to respond corporation into one of the leading companies in its industry. Um, in fact. Uh, HCL Technologies were one of the very few companies that continued to register growth even during the recession of 2008 to 2009. Um, the transformation comes in four phases and I'll talk a little bit about each of them here. Phase 1, Mirror Mirror, creating a need for change. Now at this stage, it is important for the company to not just have a goal in mind. What is really critical is to take an honest look at the current situation, confront their reality, accept what is failing, and then at the same time be able to envision the future that they actually desire. Now you all know um, in a game of soccer or football, depending on which region you are from, um, the most dangerous or most vulnerable time for any particular team is right after they have scored, right? Because everybody is so busy celebrating, they think that they're in the lead or they've just equalized and they kind of like let their defenses down. It is a little bit like that for companies as well. When you are riding on the wave of success, everybody is patting themselves on the back, they're, they're patting each other's back. I mean, if you're so busy celebrating, uh, you might just not realize that your competitor is right behind you and they can easily overtake you in a flash. through transparency creating a culture of change. It is often there exists uh, in any company an us versus them situation between the management and the employees. Being open and honest is so important for a company to come together and achieve a common goal. Um, in this book it talks about oops in this book it talks about pushing the envelope of transparency now this of course is easier said than done people are often reluctant to be open about uh, what's not working because they also fear um, fear admitting their weaknesses unfortunately these are the very critical things that need to be addressed in order for a company to remain competitive and to be able to move forward Phase 3, inverting the pyramid, building a structure for change. Now that the organization has gone through phase 1 and phase 2, they are ready to get into gear for the transformation. Now once the company is ready for the transformation or have um, accepted the need for change, the organization also needs to create a structure that supports and facilitate the change process. We hear of people going for team building exercises, lots of training and seminars and so on and so forth. But if the design of the company does not support or facilitate any of these changes, then you know it's not going to work. You have heard how many times that people who have gone for all these training seminars and team building exercises, you know, they get really hyped up for a while, then eventually it dies down. You know this is true. Here, Vinet 
Atlaya talks about the value zone where value is truly created for the customers. In HCL Technologies case, this is where the interface between the employee and customer takes place. Now, unfortunately, these value creators report to supervisors and managers further up the pyramid in what uh, Vinet Naya calls enabling functions and they do not contribute directly to the value zone. Um, and as you can see, this is a problem with structure because people who are in charge may not actually have uh, an up-to-date or day-to-day -day interaction with people on the shop floor who are directly in touch with the customers. I can do I can like do an entire series of videos on this problem alone. Perhaps I should. Phase 4, recasting the role of the CEO, transferring the responsibility for change. Now, during the transformation process, the author learned this, and I'm going to quote from the book. As a CEO or as any leader or manager, you must stop thinking of yourself as the only source of change. You must avoid the urge to answer every question or provide a solution to every problem. This is gold. I agree with the book in entirety here. Um, any leader should really be asking a lot more questions, be a little bit more inclusive, and more importantly, transferring ownership of the organization's growth to to the next generation of uh, leaders who are closer to the value zone. And if you can't find anyone that you actually can trust with the growth of your company, then you clearly have not been hiring the right people. And then that means the company has a bigger problem than it thinks it currently has. really the idea of putting employees first has been around for some time in this book the great game of business by jack stack this book covers a lot of those ideas and lays out in detail how to take plan and transform them into practice um, the reason why i am reviewing this book instead of this one is because uh, i've read this one recently and it's still fresh in my mind whereas this one I read quite some time ago and if you look at all the tabs that I have here uh, you can tell this book is an absolute gem now you can have a lot of great ideas uh, you can have a lot of uh, ambition for your company but nothing is going to come into fruition if you do not hire and keep the right people and at the same time remove those who are not getting with the program. Um, on that note, I have another book to recommend and that would be Delivering Happiness by my hero, Tony Shea. Anyone who knows me, especially my students in my business class, um, they know that I talk a lot about Tony Shea and um, Zappos. So much so that they are convinced that if they just put Tony Shea's and Zappo somewhere in the assignment, I would automatically give them an A. So do you read it or skip it? In my opinion, and you know I've got one, I've talked about two other books which I felt were a lot more inspiring and stimulating. However, if you are like me, you just enjoy reading business books, why not? Go ahead and read the book because there is nothing to lose in reading more. Well, there you have it. I've covered three books today instead of one, so you get great value when you subscribe to my channel. If you have read any of these books, um, please feel free to leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. I'd love to hear from you. All right, thank you so much for watching. As always, hit that like button, share this video, because if you do, good things will come your way. Until I see you again, remember to keep reading and be better. Noble, bye. One more thing guys, if you're not already a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button, it would mean so much to me. You can connect with me on Instagram and Facebook and watch all my other videos as well. Thank you so much!